Hello and welcome to The Lion, the Witch, and the Narcissist. Uh, so you guys heard the conversation, well, argument now, uh, between my mom, my brother, and Satan, my brother's wife, that's what I call her. Um, so I want to talk about this conversation a little bit and just point out some of the things that I, you know, tactics and um, behaviors that you could see, you know, that I recognize. Of course, I'm not a, you know, I, I'm not a psychologist or any psychiatrist or whatever. I'm just, you know, I, this is just from me, you know, uh, gaining knowledge myself and basically doing research. So, uh, you know, I'm not, may not be a hundred percent dead on, but you know, these are the associations that I make. Uh, so I want to start off firstly by saying, you know, I acknowledge my behavior and my role in things. And, you know, I, I acknowledge how I played into the situation and how I made things worse. You know, my brother texts me and I basically, you know, tried to back him off kindly. That didn't work. He said something more insulting, you know, and maybe I'm a little bit overly sensitive uh, you know, I don't know, but I, I, I was very offended because, because of the fact that when I offered up, you know, um, compromise with him, it was just, there was none, you know, he kept saying like, you just get a new dress, get, get a new dress, get a new dress. I was kept being the answer. And then he started getting more and more insulting as time went on. So I felt the need to, you know, counteract that because it's like, you, you don't have sympathy. And he didn't read the whole, you know, chain of text. And I have to find those because I know I have them somewhere. And I'll post them on my blog and link them below. Uh, you know, but I, he didn't find, you know, he didn't read everything that was there. And the way that the whole conversation built up to that point. But, you know, I could have left out a couple of things. And I realize that now and looking back, you know, I, and that's something um, as a person that I'm working on to you know change about myself i know that i'm very reactive i know that i you know a lot of the times i just say things i'm you know impulsive i understand that about myself and then it's definitely something that i know and that i have worked very 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 hard to change in the last you know especially in the last eight months of my life um you know i really know now healthier ways of dealing with these people for instance you know I've, you know, I've gone through this whole situation with my mom passing away and having to go through this whole thing with, with my brother and his wife and some of my family members who are also toxic individuals. Uh, and I've had, you know, I have had to find different ways because I realized how I was contributing to the toxicity of the situations, you know. So my way now of dealing with it is completely different than my way of dealing with it back then. Um, and that's a difference here. You know, I have started to make changes in my personality and my life and build, you know, and work on myself. On that end, there is no working on themselves. It's the same stuff. Here we are four years later and we are still in the same position. You know, they're still doing the same exact things. It's the same bullshit. Um, and I've worked on myself and I know that, you know, so I take responsibility for the way that I handled things in that situation. Me and my brother, uh, you know, were able to move past this and I'll get into that as time goes on as the story, you know, advances, but she just was not, you know, willing to let go of, of anything. So I want to, um, I wrote some, you know, words down here for you guys. And I just want to tell you guys also about this website called Out of the Fog. Uh, great website, great resource for information about um, cluster B personality disorders. So, you know, they have a lot of words on there and definitions and information. And there's also a support group uh, more geared towards, you know, the, the direct victims, you know, somebody who was in a relationship and or you know whatever uh parents family you know stuff like that so i just want you guys to know that that's there i'll put a link below the video for you guys to go check that out i mean there's plenty of great resources for information i just like this specific website because 
they give a lot of definitions of words and so um and traits and stuff like that so it's very detailed and i just kind of like the way it's set up so some of the things that were going on in this conversation and if you guys have been you know doing your homework and doing all your research about narcissistic personality disorder, you probably recognize some of these words. If you don't, like I said, there'll be a link below. But I want to talk about some of these things that were actually going on as um, you know the conversation went on and point them out to you guys this way. Maybe you could recognize them in your, your, your own life. So one of the things was obviously projection, and there was a lot of that going on. Um, uh, projection is defined as basically taking your feelings and putting them onto somebody else or, you know, things that you're doing um, and putting it onto somebody else. And there was a lot of that going on. I mean, tons of that going on. You know, it was all, it was all about, uh, for instance, a great, great example of the projection was her getting angry at me because I was telling my family, you know, about what was going on in this whole situation about what happened. And then later in the conversation, she says something like, well, if she's not proud of what she does, she shouldn't do him. If she doesn't want people to know, she shouldn't do him or something like that. She doesn't want people to find out. Well, that should go the same for you. If you don't want people to find out that you're, you know, telling me what to wear to your wedding, you shouldn't tell me that then, you know? So don't get mad when I go and tell people, you know? She's projecting that onto me. So, um, you know, that was one of the things. I mean, there were so many different ways of things going on. Uh, it was all about my reaction, you know, my reaction. No responsibility, and that's the other thing. The, the blame shifting, and that goes along with the denial um, of what their role was you know um my brother and her you know my brother you know she didn't play an active role she didn't actually you know she wasn't actually the one who told me she used my brother which is something that these people will do it's called a flying monkey basically they'll use somebody or, or triangulation you know really um they'll use somebody else so i'm you know she's triangulating between me and my brother you know, and, and who's more important to my brother, me or her, me or uh, my mom or her, you know, that's how she was triangulating. So, cause I had, triangulation was something that I really didn't understand when I was reading about it. And now I understand. It's like, basically when they pin one person against another. Um, and so, you know, for their, whatever it is, you know, whatever kind of thing they're trying, their personal gain basically to get your loyalty, you know? So she put my brother against me, you know, in a way to make, you know, who's more important to her, make him make a choice in, in between the two of us. Um, so, and it's really sick, but she sent my brother out to do all the work and then she didn't want to take any responsibility for it, you know? And then she's kind of gaslighting us in a sense and my mom, because she, you know, is basically saying, you know, it wasn't me. I wasn't home. And it's like, it's your, it's your son. And it's like, you know, we know him. We've known him our whole lives and we know what his character is and what kind of things he cares about and what kind of things he doesn't care about and how he, you know, acts and does things. It's just, you know, how could you sit here and try to make us think that we're crazy and we don't know him? So that's a, that's an example of gaslighting right there. And there was a lot of that going on. You know, even if you guys listen to my first conversation, she's doing the same thing to my mom. She's telling her, you know, well, you don't know. Your daughter doesn't tell you everything. And you don't know what she says. And you don't know what she does. And my mom knew everything. I showed my mom screenshots. I mean, I don't hide those kinds of things. You know, I'm very honest and open. And when things happen and I'm, I'm willing to admit where I, you know, did wrong. And so it's, you know, but she's gaslighting and trying to make my mom believe that she doesn't know me as well as she does. Um, so that, that's, you know, a couple of examples of things, uh, obviously blame shifting. If you guys heard that term, that was something that she was doing because she was just putting all the blame on my brother, the blame on me, the blame on my mom for not telling me to not say something, you know, it's, it's everybody else's fault. It's not her fault. Nothing's her fault. She wasn't home. She wasn't there. She didn't do anything wrong, you know, and that's, 
bullshit. You know, she just because she wasn't at my house when my brother saw the dress or she wasn't home when my brother said something to me about the dress, that doesn't mean, you know, absolve her of responsibility. Um, obviously, you guys can see, and, and that goes along with the denial, she's denying that she had any role in this. You know, she wasn't home. She wasn't there. She didn't know about it. But I mean, she took the time out of her life to go down to the mall, okay, go to the store that I bought my dress in, dig through the racks, and try the dress on her own body. What? Like, that is not normal behavior. I, I, I'm, that's my brother. Like, what do you, you know, what do you think? He's going to be checking me out or something? And we have, me and her have two completely different body types. And they just don't, you know, it, it just doesn't even make any sense. But when my mom, you know, confronts her and says, well, why'd you do that? She realizes that it sounds crazy, I guess. And she's, then she turns to my mom and she tries to, you know, divert my mom's attention away. And her explanation for it just doesn't even make any sense. So she, she says something like, cause after all this shit about what she said about me and what she said about, I said something about my brother's ex. And, you know, she says, and I'm like, but that doesn't explain why you went to the store and tried my dress on. And I think when I had my, you know, and I'm going to tell you guys this story, but I had one confrontation with her after this, this argument. And that was the only time I really ever exchanged words, words with her in person like that. Maybe one other time through text. Um, she, you know, I, we were arguing and I was trying to make her stay the course and stay on topic. So when she tried to divert my attention away, you know, I was like, whoa, 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 let's go back to this thing, you know? And I was trying to keep her on topic and cause she was trying to trip me up and confuse me, you know, and you could see it working on my mom in both of these conversations. You could see that she's trying to confuse you. And so that's another thing that went on here is that she's trying to confuse my mom about, you know, what, what's going on. Um, and just like change the subject. They, that's what they do. They're, they're like, keep, changing the subject, changing the subject, you know, then another thing that she does, and you guys could see this is, um, raising her voice, you know, like for instance, my mom was just trying to, you know, make a comparison, like, listen, your mom might be okay with this, but I'm not, and she, you know, her reaction to my mom saying that, and she's like, don't get my mother involved, don't get my mother involved, screaming, there was no need for that. My mom wasn't saying anything, you know, really bad about her mother. She was just saying like, your mom might accept that you and your sister don't talk. I don't accept that, you know, which is a fact. Obviously her mom is accepting it. Um, and she really does her poor, I really feel bad for her mother. She treats her mother like shit. Um, well, so why would I expect her to treat my mother any better? Uh, the other thing, so raising her voice, you know, that's something that they do in arguments to try to you know, get emotions out of you and, and just get you crazy. It's like they love to, you know, manufacture chaos. Um, another thing was the self-entitlement. That's something, you know, narcissists have. They're very entitled. You know, I, I love the part where she's saying the family as if she's part of my family. First of all, at this point in time, she had only met my extended family once at my son's christening one time. But she's already talking about it, you know, as if she's in the family, like she's part of it. Like you're engaged. And it's so funny because if you guys listen to the later conversation, she, you know, disassociates herself from the family. Like that's his family. That's not my family, you know, but when it serves her, it's her family. So she's talking about the family and saying, you know, do you think it's right that she tells everybody in the family? Like, it's my family. I could talk to my family about whatever I want to talk to them about. You, you don't make that decision. You're not going to control what I say to my family. You know, my mom, I want to also explain this to you guys. My mom was like agreeing with a lot of the um, stuff that she was saying at that point in time. But I don't, you know... We discussed it afterwards, and I don't think she agreed with a lot of it afterwards. I think her agreeing with it was just trying to, you know, find common grounds and appease her at the time to just make peace because that's what my mom does. She's a, you know, peacemaker. And to see her, like, so 
flipped out the way she was and yelling. I got to tell you guys, like, I mean, of course I've had those kind of fights with my mom and my brother has. I have never in my entire life seen my mom fight with anybody outside of our household in that manner. She does not fight with people like that. That is not her thing. My mom's actually a very passive, you know, person who doesn't really stand up for herself. So to see her fighting like that and getting so upset, I mean, that one part where you could actually hear that she's crying and there's no empathy for that. That's the other thing, huge thing in this whole, um, that whole conversation was just the lack of empathy from her. She was, you know, no empathy for my mom's situation. You know, my mom's trying to explain to her, you know, why she has to give money and why, you know, why she's not offering up that money and how her bills work. And I don't even know why my mom got that detailed because really she didn't owe her any kind of explanation about why she can't afford to give my brother thousands of dollars. I mean, that's just crazy. Um, the other thing, you know, just no empathy for my mom's situation. You know, my mom explained to her, she's a widow, she was alone. And then on top of that, you know, what about the empathy for the fact that my mom is a widow and she is alone and her two kids aren't speaking to each other, you know, and that my family is very family oriented. And that's another thing. She has no concept of that because she doesn't even keep in touch with her own family. You know, she doesn't talk to her own sister. Um, she doesn't talk to her cousins, you know, uh, nobody. So that's why she doesn't understand the family, you know, the sense of family that we all have and the, how we compromise. You could almost hear my brother in some parts of the conversation, you know, his old self, but he sounds completely brainwashed in this conversation. I mean, when I heard it the first time, I was like, who is that? Like, who is that talking? That doesn't even sound like the person that I've known for the last 30 something years at that point in time. So it's crazy how fast this could all happen because you're, you know, you're talking, this was six months into their, you know, relationship that she already had him that brainwashed. Um, the other, let me see stuff here. I took some notes. Oh, splitting. So if you guys don't know what splitting is, it's basically, you know, they'll take something, a person, and the person is all good or all bad, you know, and obviously I was split and I'm all bad. There's no, you know, there's no redeeming factors. The damage was done. She said it, you know, there's no redeeming qualities about me. I mean, she said at one point, I have nothing to say to her. I have nothing. So my brother at one point was actually asking my mom to ask me to fake an apology to her just to get her to move on. And, you know, listen, I am not a, a beyond apologizing to somebody if they accept their role as well. Um, I wasn't going to apologize for, for her because at this point in time, that was when I really started reading about narcissists and this and that. And I started to, you know, realize that my apology is just going to be, you know, feed her ego and feed her supply. And it's really not going to do me any good. I could see by the way she treated me that the damage was done and that she had no interest in it unless it was going to benefit her in some way, you know, she was willing to forgive my mom and move past things because I, you know, my mom could serve some type of purpose to her. I don't serve a purpose, you know, so there's no, you know, I, there's nothing she could get from me that's going to enrich her life in any way, really. I'm a sister. Um, and she knows that she has to give my brother a little bit of something, you know, to, to, um, give him freedom. Uh, the, the last, uh, all right, triangulation. And then these are two, these are three other terms, um, that I used that I, that I found on this, um, website that I want to just talk about really quick, because I think that they're very clear in my brother. Um, the, one of them is called control me syndrome. And, and this is the definition. It says this describes a tendency, which some people have to force the relationships with people who have a controlling narcissistic antisocial or acting out nature so i would definitely you know my brother not that i think that i mean any of his other you know girlfriends um were narcissists like this or had personality disorders maybe this severe they might have had treats i don't think they were actually you know this 
severe. I mean, I, if I had a guess, she's diagnosable. Uh, and, you know, so I think my brother has that kind of, you know, he, he likes being controlled in a sense, you know. Um, I think he is very unsure of himself in life, you know, and he has no self-confidence and he just doesn't know how to live his life without somebody telling him how to do things. And, you know, it's easier for him. He could sit back and, you know, just relax. And he's always been like that pretty much his whole life. He just doesn't, you know, he's just not very proactive about things. Like, you know, even we would go to family parties and he would like need to know if I was going to be there you know, before he went because he didn't want to be there before me and have to, you know, uh, talk to people. Hold on. This is very prevalent in the situation that him and I are in now, uh, where he just, he just doesn't have a take charge personality. And when I get up to the current point of the story, you guys will understand what, uh, what I mean by that. So that was one thing. The other thing, imposed isolation. When abuse results in a person becoming isolated from their support network, including friends and family. This is exactly what this was going on. uh, Exactly what was going on. My, you know, my brother became very isolated. She right away, I mean, literally right off the bat, started picking off people that, I guess she felt threatened by, um, you know, one of them, my brother had a few guys that he went out with and there was one friend in particular who, you know, he's a bit, um, annoying, I guess you could say, but he's not like a bad guy. He has good intentions. He has a good heart, but he's, you know, he's the rowdy one of the bunch, I guess you could say. And she right away picked him off and like my brother just dropped him like dead weight. Like it was like, okay, I'm not talking to him anymore. And I'm like, how do you just do that? Like, how do you just drop people that easily? Like, so, you know, and I think that's where my brother has something wrong with him too, that he just will drop people. Like he has no, you know, connection. It's just very strange. And I'd love to know thoughts about that with you guys. Like, because he's been like that also his whole life where he has no really strong like he never forms really strong attachments to friends or you know people like that um i want to know if you guys have um any thoughts about that okay and so the last thing is uh normalizing oh no it's not the last thing second to last thing normalizing uh and i want to read this to you normalizing is a tactic used to desensitize an individual to abusive coercive or inappropriate behaviors. In essence, normalizing is the manipulation of another human being to get them to agree to or accept something that is in conflict with the law, social norms, or their own basic code of behavior. There obviously was a lot of normalizing going on here with my brother. You know, she was she basically created a, an entirely new reality with him for him. Um, and, and made him think that all of these things are normal and they're not, you know, and trying to normalize it to us too, as if like, we don't know him, you know, I, um, you know, I always picture in my head and I mean, I don't really picture it anymore after all the shit I've been through in the last eight months with them, um, of my life. Well, more than eight months, year. Um, but for the three years prior, you know, I would picture in my head this day that would come somewhere down the lines that my brother and I would have a conversation about how she brainwashed him and, you know, isolated him and, you know, like, like that he would become aware of it because I, you know, I just don't see their relationship making it for the long haul. Just can't, I, I, these kind of healthy relationships, I just don't see it going forever, you know? Um, the only things that might stop it is their child. Uh, you know, I don't know. They're, you know, but I, I feel like my brother, for two years, we knew that his ex was cheating on him, right? I mean, we all knew. We didn't know it for 100% sure. But pretty much all the signs were there, you know? We all were like, okay. You know, she wasn't even like... To be honest with you guys, trying too hard to hide 
it, you know, she was almost kind of flaunting it and, and throwing it in his face. And I don't know what it was in him. Um, you know, he was just in complete denial about it. I mean, it was so obvious uh, to so many people, too. And he just he just wasn't, you know, he just didn't see it. He just didn't want to accept it. I don't know. And I remember when he finally, finally caught on. I, you know, I asked him, I'm like, Did you, you had like no idea, you know, and he told me that he's like, you know, I had thoughts, but I just, you know, I just trusted her. I just trusted her. And I'm like, oh my God, because there was a lot of very blatant and obvious things. I mean, she went to Vegas with this guy that she was cheating on him with, you know, but she, it, it was her, her boss, quote unquote, I guess. And she, you know, went to Vegas and my brother just didn't ask any questions. Like I, you know, as soon as I heard about that trip, I mean, and then when she came back, wait, well, as soon as I heard about she was going on this trip, I asked him, I'm like, oh, is she staying in a hotel room by, by herself or you know what? And he was like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, you don't even ask this like, hello. I think she wanted to kind of get caught when she came back from Vegas. I'll never forget this. She posted a picture of her and the guy in Vegas hanging out, just walking down the strip. And they kind of, you know, just stopped to take like a selfie and their heads are like pressed together. And, you know, you see that in those like in Cosmo magazine or one of those kind of things where, you know, they're like body language experts, you know, and I'm like, wow, I'm like, that is something else that their heads are that close to each other like it just looked very intimate to me you know it looked like a picture you would take with your boyfriend not with your boss you know um and there were, and she made that her main profile picture on Facebook and I you know in my head I was like oh my god like my husband if I ever did that with I had a friend who was a co-worker uh, I mean a co-worker who was a friend of mine and my husband just like you know little too much with the jealousy about it but you know I, I do think a little jealousy is normal I mean you know my brother just like didn't even question anything my husband would have flipped out if I used that picture as my main profile picture on Facebook I mean that's just like absurd that he was that she would do that but he didn't notice my brother just didn't even take note of it it was like oh duh what you know and I'm like, you know, it took him two years to catch on that this girl was cheating on him. And it was obvious to us for, from the time that they got engaged, you know, I, I think she was cheating on him or at least starting to, you know, think about it or lose interest in him. And he just like, it's just unbelievable. And so, you know, maybe the same thing will happen one day. Maybe he will you know, start to realize and recognize the um, unhealthy, you know, relationship that he has with his wife because it really is unhealthy. Um, if somebody is trying to keep you away from your family, especially, you know, there's something wrong. That That's not normal, you know. Normal, um, you know, and I'll get into this a little bit more in the future, but, you know, his wife wouldn't even, like, allow him to come places by himself without her she has to be everywhere that he goes and if he isn't you know if she isn't there the few times that she does allow him which is under very 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 serious circumstances she will drop him off and pick him up this way you know she has control over the amount of time that he spends so um i just wanted to go over those few things with you guys and that, you know, talk about the conversation and the things that I recognize. And I hope it helps you guys maybe recognize, you know, signs in your own lives. So um, please, you know, leave comments, subscribe and like the videos. And I will talk to you guys in the next video where I will continue the story of what happened.